Does this look infected? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com. We've got the new Death Guard releases today. Uh, now, there is uh, other stuff coming out, of course. You know, you'll be able to get all the other Death Guard uh, stuff that um, some of it sold out, some of it isn't. But for the most part, this is the the new new releases, and everything else is just getting like kind of a reboxing with this new. Uh, what we call it scarlet kind of design of packaging and such like that now the miasmic malignifier is there a new terrain piece and it looks like it's got some modularity to it but we'll find out here in a second this bad boy is 60 dollars the lord of virulence is 35 dollars i think and the pox walkers now i don't remember if they had these by themselves before they might have had like a five pack but i don't remember it being 10 uh, this is $35 and, and I'm curious to see what this looks like because this used to come in the Dark Vengeance box back in 2017 and if I remember correctly that sprue actually had part of a Death Guard but not a whole Death Guard Marine on it so I'm wondering what they uh, what they did with that that would be kind of curious to see now also they came out with Death Cards uh, Death Guard um, uh, data cards and a codex book as well this week uh and the combat patrol too but uh the combat patrol i mean i, I don't need to show you that it's 140 dollars. we can go over the retail value here in a second um but i don't really need to show you the product and to be quite honest i'd, I'd rather not buy things because it's so hard to find things right now so i'd rather kind of keep my purchases limited just to show everybody and not kind of take away from other hobbyists or other sales that you know game stores uh, could potentially make out there personally i don't like the data cards i think the new ones uh the backs are very plain um it, it just it just feels very forced and, and i just i don't think there's any value to them especially since now they're 25 dollars um, so I'm not going to buy them either, but you know, maybe it's your thing. Maybe you need it. The game aids always help on the tabletop, but I find uh, getting printouts and such from uh, some, some of the internet sites out there are just uh, good enough for me these days. Just as good as having uh, data cards in. Well, I could just print out a new set when um, uh, the rules change. <laughs> so again, uh, these are the new releases. You can always get these for less at sites like dicehead.com or of course Amazon, or hopefully your local game store has enough uh, to get you what you need. Jumping over to the site real quick, we're gonna show you the breakdown of this new Combat Patrol box. So it's $140 retail, and here's everything you get in it. So three of those new Pox Walker boxes, which is 105 retail. The seven man Plague Marine squad, those are the multi-part kits, they are $50. Typhus is $40 and the biologist putrefier is $30. So total MSRP 225, total value of $85. That's of course, assuming that you don't already get a discount. I mean, most stores can discount up to 15%. Um, according to GW's policies, and some stores, you know, if they don't advertise it well, they can sell for whatever they want. So either way, uh, hopefully you can get a little bit better of a value there if this is going to be your, uh, your build for your uh, death in particular. Uh, death watch or death guard collection but you know this might not be the optimum thing but hey there might be some value here now speaking of pox walkers these guys are actually kind of cool like i said they've been out for a while um what else comes in here oh instruction manual so here's the instructions and it's probably yeah it's exactly like they used to be they're all on 25 mil bases some of them have left and or front and top halves but sometimes you can switch the heads around not on everyone but for the most part uh, you're kind of locked in with some some of the builds here but there is a little bit of variance and of course you can kind of paint them differently and there it is right there omit half the body the front and is that the head I guess we'll find out here in a second of a random Death Guard space room because they use the same exact sprue from the Dark Imperium box. Look at that. So there's the Death Guard. There's the Death Guard. There's the Death Guard. Oh, it's just arm. So you, you get uh, you're missing the front and this arm right here, which probably has a bolter on it, if I recall correctly, I forget. But everything else is going to give you that pox walker here. And if you get the start or the combat patrol or start collecting, they all start to sound the same, right? This kit is you're going to get three of these particular boxes in here, but it's thirty five dollars each, and it comes with twenty five mil bases and a little crack baggie. So it doesn't look like they manufactured this. Normally they come uh, shrink wrapped. Um, in their own little uh, section. So that's kind of uh, cool. Now we've assembled uh, and painted Poxwalkers because they've been out for three years now. Let me show you one of those. 
So here's what a painted poxwalker looks like. And if you like this style, uh, we actually did a tutorial on it. So you could probably just search uh, how to paint poxwalker spiky bits. And you'll be able to find it. And I'll show you how he stacks up to something like a space marine, right? Uh, right there. So that's how he stacks up to a space marine. Uh, so a little bit smaller, you know, if it's not on the scenic base. Now this is, uh, I based all my Chaos Demons with this. Uh, it's a... Uh, Chaos Waste, I think, from Micro Art Studios They're over in um, Eastern Europe. Pretty cool company. Been uh, using their bases for a number of years. Or they were the first, quite possibly still the best out there when it comes to uh, dope resin bases. So let's jump to the next kit, and that's gonna be the Lord of Virulence. So here he is. This is the new uh, special character. Now a lot of people have some thoughts on the design, so it'd be interesting to see what you think about this particular design. Um, you know, I. <sighs> I kind of think GW personally could have done better with the design. It looks very boxy. It looks it looks kind of rushed. The pose doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Um, but uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. And a lot of times you need to get some different looks at the poses uh, before you you know and not rush to judgment on uh, some of the GW stuff because it actually looks better sometimes when it's assembled. And we're about to find out if that's the case with this one. So just glancing at the instructions, it looks uh, very slicey. Uh, we've seen a lot of this in the past and they tell you right here where you need to line up the middle section here with the uh, ball sack or the pus sack on the front right there and then you have to kind of start clamshelling everything together horizontally instead of like vertically like the front you know attaching to the back and you kind of squeeze it in nope this is all horizontally it looks like and then you've got the leg that goes up in there and the, whatever crazy wannabe bat wing thing this is here and an extra set of pipes I like this top-down view here. This will probably prove very helpful uh, putting this together. And then his head goes on and then some pipes to his head. The actual weapon itself looks like it's got slices on the barrel. And then his fist is also two parts. And then his little uh, fire hydrant hose activator thing right there. Okay, and then we've got more pipes, more sections. And I do like how they do these slices because it hides a lot of the gaps and the mold lines that would normally be there. But this is a very busy model, just looking at all this stuff that I didn't even realize was on it until we got this instructions open. So that's really interesting, okay. So there's this uh, quick Ikea reference card right there if you don't have the codex. Here's the sprue, and it doesn't, well, it kind of looks like it's that easier to build style where it's got a lot of slots and things, but it's not push fit by any means but it's gonna line up and you're gonna be able to use those notches and things to your advantage. And unfortunately, it looks like there's gonna be some really weird mold lines in like a lot of weird places because the way they slice this down, just, well, no, that's like, oh, no, that's not, that's gonna be a big slice. Oh, that's why that's there. I wondered, they literally painted the mold line on this. I saw that and I was like, I was wondering, I was like, man, that's. That's really pronounced. I wonder if that's part of the model. That is literally the mold line. They didn't shave the mold line. Oh my goodness. Did not expect that from the box art. Woo! Look at it, right? You can see it right there. That is literally the mold line that they didn't trim. It's on their box art. Wow. Where's the QC at, GW? Goodness gracious. But other than that, it looks like it goes together. But there'll be a lot of mold lines to trim. Don't be, don't do that. You don't want to see that on your model because. This model would look, I mean, that just really stood out to me. And I did it so much that I noticed it as soon as I saw it on that model. So, I mean, it's just, there's something about this model. I don't know what it is. Let's get it together. Let's, let's, let's hold judgment. Let's get it together and see what it looks like. So I, I think, I think getting it together, which this one together, uh, you know, it's, you got to watch all that horizontal kind of assembly m mess. Um, there's little sp studs and spurs and you want to clip them all down and make sure you get it nice and flush so everything kind of fits together. Um, other than that, it does fit together eventually. You just kind of have to be very careful about it and the little, um, that little hose right there and this, the top down diagram. Now this didn't line up quite right, but with a little bit more glue, it would definitely, right? See, that's just me not following through right there. But other than that, uh, I think the model, it's fine with the assembly. Now, we rush to judgment on this because I feel like this, this model, you know, looking at it from the different poses, it doesn't look that bad. Like, it kind of seems to make a little bit more sense to me. Now, I, 
<laughs> so kind of weird but not only is that the mold line that's also part of the armor like they wedged it they put it to a, a nice uh, point right there as well so just kind of keep that in mind that it actually kind of um ends up in like a triangle kind of pointy shape right there too so uh this is a mold line up here though so you got to watch out for stuff like that and i left this on there just to show you but there is mold line down here um but you can knock it off and then you still are going to have that really hard edge right there which is great for if you're airbrushing and you can come back and do some really cool uh wild hyper highlighting as well but and then you can see the random mold lines so there are a lot of random ones on the pipes right here a lot of random mold lines still but that one i called out uh about the box art that's actually part of the model which you know it's always worth taking a second look at things because <laughs> until you get into your hot little hands it's really really hard to tell i feel like here's what he uh sizes up to now he is on a 50 mil um that's pox walker so obviously a little bit bigger poor little pox walker and a primaris marine so a lot of the chaos is definitely on par if this guy is technically terminator armor he looks like terminator armor then you know the terminator armor definitely got a scale up compared to primaris because if you look at the current terminator armor uh from space marines well Let's just say it's about primary size <laughs> give or take right there and if you want to see how he compares to morty well i was going to say morty and show you with the terrain but this is how he compares to morty <laughs> so uh he's really he's really tiny <laughs> there's the whole morty right there but we'll show you more of that here in a second so last but certainly not least the miasmic malignifier say that 10 times fast right this is a larger box set 35 dollars or excuse me 60 dollars continuing that whole trend of uh, gw kind of pigeonhole you into taking terrain uh for your armies you know we saw it well not really forcing but giving you the option and lots of bonuses i mean we saw it with the hammerfall bunker but we're not really seeing those as much on the tabletop for marines it's two chonky sprues which definitely makes you wonder like hey if two chunky sprues like this only cost $60, why do I got to pay $84 for a big chunky sprue for a different kind of character? And I think, you know, um, most people, well, there's two schools of thought here. First of all, this was actually made in China. So designed in the UK, made in China. So this kind of carries along the tradition of a lot of their bulkier terrain and stuff. They're getting for a higher, a lower price point you know higher margin out of china so that kind of makes sense but there are a lot of kits out there that you kind of scratch your head and you're like hmm i wonder why they priced it that way like do they think that oh hey i only need x of these in my army so it's going to be this price or vice versa and i will i would like to add that i called them out on the train when it very first start they started making it in china um, almost eight nine years ago i think at this point and that stuff, and even their bases, their their own bases, their first run of bases was very dull and not crisp at all. It was, and it almost seemed like they they touched up the pictures on the on the the, the carton, um, the box lid. But this terrain here, as you're about to see, as I hold it up to the light, this stuff is probably the best detailed stuff that they've actually come out with out of china i mean look you can see individual detail like before eight years ago we get something like this and there would be this would just be blank right and it would just be rough and i'd be like mm, i'm not really feeling that but this i'm definitely feeling like as far as uh crisp detail it's all here there isn't a whole lot of areas that are just left like intentionally like ah eh, hey you know that's the quality we're not gonna do it but this i feel like you know this is a good kit it seems to be mostly well designed it's going to be split in half it doesn't seem to be that etb it's not push fit um or easier to build it's definitely not push fit kind of reminds me something out of uh, dr dr seuss story and unlike some of the other terrain kits it actually comes with the base which is kind of cool but i think the other the little ball sack thingy that stands next to it doesn't have a base but this is a really cool looking base it's very very well textured and stuff so i think that's uh that's kind of neat so we're seeing a lot of firsts on this kit let's see how it goes together i imagine a lot of computer slices yep so a lot of computer slices here getting the balls together putting the balls on the base some um, piping little smokestacks and things seems pretty standard though this looks kind of worrisome oh that's the back okay and then some piping some more piping i don't know if that are there notches on that uh it looks yeah there are notches on there okay so that's good so they tell you where to line that up okay cool and then this piece this high riser this phallic design uh you put some bottom looks like some sort of o-ring on it and then it attaches there and it's got a whole bunch of well, spiky bits on it 
And over here, there's some more. Looks like some dangly kind of uh, eyelet things. More hoses and such. This doesn't seem to be too bad. Kind of straightforward, almost like the uh, moonshine for uh, Goom Spike kits. And, oh, here it is. Okay, so these little hooks go on here, kind of like the feculent gnarl maw. And that's interesting. We're gonna have to see how that glues together. And then it's got these side pieces where it looks like some piping and then you're done. Okay, well, that seems pretty simple. Let's uh, let's see how simple it actually is. So yeah, this uh, this went together pretty well. Um, it's actually way taller than I thought. It's almost, it's almost 12 inches tall, but that might be like 11, 10-ish in change right there. Now these little things do hook on here. So you want to be kind of careful in, you know, if you're going to glue them down, uh, just kind of set them on here. And I would wait for gravity just to make sure that, you know, and kind of watch it so you don't get them gluing and then it's like off to the side because it like the glue set mid wiggle or something like that. Um, you know, everything kind of goes together here, but then there's this weird option where they got this pipe and this pipe actually could connect, but there's nothing to connect it to. It just, I mean, it sits there and it, you could you could glue it down and, it, and it's flat, right? So I don't know what that's about, but it, it would work. Or this thing right here, the same deal. Like, I don't know what, you know, this little potion pot thing right here. I mean, it's all, it's all very well done. It's great detail work here. Lots of, you know, you can get some base coats on here and get some washes and stuff in here. And it's going to look really cool and really diseased. And if you're into airbrushing, well, the, you've got all sorts of options here because there is so much uh, to do with this thing and then come back and hit a lot of the metals. But there's still a lot of detail work. So it's going to take you a hot minute. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff on here. And most of the gaps in the, um, uh, like you'll notice some of the gaps and stuff here, but for the most part, the flash and the, and the gaps are, are kind of hidden. So, you know, if you have to use a little bit of uh, plastic putty or something like that to get in there and fill it uh, from Vallejo, that stuff's great. Or you could use some super thin uh, Tamiya cement. That stuff's great too. It's got the little furnace and you can kind of see through and see some of that uh, detail actually through the furnace right there. So if you want to leave that off, you can paint that uh, kind of separately. Now, here's how it compares to the feculent Gnarl Maw, speaking of which, the other terrain from Nurgle. So it's a lot bigger, but these would look really cool kind of around it maybe. And if you got Morty and you're gonna play with both of these, which I could see where a lot of people are gonna do that. Well, there it is. It's actually almost as tall as Morty, believe it or not. So kind of cool. Uh, very interesting little uh, neat piece of terrain that I think is uh, pretty well done on their part. Um, as far as that goes, so I, I got nothing I'm bad to say about that. So that, for the most part, is, well, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching our unbox and build of all the new, air quotes, uh, kits from Games Workshop for the Death Guard this week. Now, of course, we know some, there's, there's definitely uh, lots of, uh, well, potentially lots of Marines, but probably lots of Marines on the horizon soon, so we'll have more on that. We've, uh, we've got most of the Marine kits here still uh, already assembled, and we'll be comparing those. Uh, in just a few short weeks as well. So that is it for this one. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.